I just know if she's had the curry the night before. This toilet paper in his cool box. <laughs> Hello everybody, I hope you're well. Right then, let's get straight on with it. Operation carpets. They've been ordered, they've been paid for, they're on their way. That train has left the station and it ain't stopping until it gets here. December 2nd is the D-Day, that's when they're arriving, which means I've got till December 1st to get everything perfectly ready for them. And what that means is I've got to redecorate the loft simply because over the course of the job, for what we've done downstairs, it's become a dusty storage hellhole and there's no saving this now. There's no cleaning this. I'm going to redecorate the lights. I've got the sprayer, I've got the paint, I've got it all. It's all sort of cost negative, sort of time, you know, time expensive, but I'm going to do it that way it's all done. Then we're going to clean this room out, clean all the other rooms out below it. And then that's it done then, that's ready. So we're, we're, sort of, we're sort of there, but there's a little bit of work just to, just to get sorted. So I'm gonna decorate this, I'm gonna talk you through what's happening in the eaves, just down there, because I'm gonna do something slightly different there. And then once this is drying, I'm gonna go downstairs with Rich, who's going around sorting all the doors out, and they are now all finished, apart from the one he's on as we speak. And then I'm gonna do the skirting around the ground floor, which is quite exciting, because then that could be then finishing its entirety. So we're getting there, we're all right. So we'll crack on now, I'll talk you through the plan up here, and then we'll get on with it. Well, this looks a lot worse than what it is. I've had a few hairline cracks appear in the joints of the plasterboard all the way around. A couple of reasons. First and foremost, obviously, what's gone on below this to the house is a massive assault on it. So a bit of moving and shaking hasn't helped. Plus the fact that this was plastered on the hottest day of the year, last year, 2022. And this entire room was done out in a day and it was bone dry by 8am the following morning. It's dried out too fast, so it hasn't helped at all. But I've gone round, I've gouged all the cracks out. They're only hairline, but I've proper gouged them out with my Purdy, my favourite tool. I'll show you that in a second. Got a, got a nice deep groove on all of them, which is why they look so bad. Filled them with my favourite filler. Do a prick there. Sanded it. And there you go. It shrunk a little bit because I did gouge it out probably past its maximum depth for a filler. But filled it again and I filled it again, sand this, all feeling lovely. And there we go. Now, weird experiment is it's not really an experiment. This is technically sort of how they do it in America, albeit well, albeit that this is a DIY version of it. Something at some point is going to go along here and it's never going to be seen. Now what a lot of people do when it comes to loft conversions in the eaves like this is build cupboards straight down and utilise that space because you can't have it as a part of the room because you can't get under there. So you build a wall down here and have that as storage all perfectly normal and sensible. However, when you've got a front door mat it becomes a little bit awkward to do because then you've got to finish it there and it all becomes a bit of a task, whereas normally it's just a stud wall all the way across with the hatch in it, you know what I mean? But it's all a bit, not too sure what we're gonna do with it here. So I'm gonna decorate it as if it's a part of the room and then as we, the room evolves with our life here, it will become something else. And I'm sure it's never gonna be seen. There's definitely gonna be a desk here, which is why those sockets are so high. It's desk underneath. The, the window, looking over what's, you know, a fairly decent view for around here. Chair, you know, blah, 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 but either side, who knows. So all I've done, because we are on a budget as well, I've gone around and I've filled all the holes and all the joints in the proper jointing compound. Now what you're supposed to do is tape over them um, for strength and then fill over it and then sand it back and then paint it and there's a whole trade to it. Uh, but I haven't done that. I've just used the jointing compound, just gone over it. There's no tape there at all. It's just filler, basically. And it's gonna get painted, and then we're gonna have a look to see how it looks. And the reason why I'm showing you, because you might have an understairs little project or something you might wanna do, that for this reason, same sort of reason as this, I should say, it's never gonna be seen, it's gonna have stuff in it, 
up against the walls, it's all going to get knocked, but you don't want the plasterboard, you want a little bit nicer finish. Let's see if this works as a, uh, a practical, reasonably priced solution. So there we go, so we're going to paint the room, paint that, see how it all looks in a bit, and then we'll skirt it and come back to it a little bit later on. There we go, coat one. Looked very much like it did before, didn't it? Just uh, less cracks. Well, that's gone on lovely. Just let it dry now, let it do its thing. You see, you can still see that. Let's see what it looks like when it's dry properly. See if it's still as prominent. But it's going to get another coat anyway, why not? We've got the machine now, it's all the masking's up. And that's definitely going to want something. That's just painting on bare blaster board, so that's going to suck that paint straight through. I expect that to tone down a little bit, so it'll need another coat. But there we have it. So I'm going to do that again in a few hours' time. Get the skirting on, give it a glossing all over throughout, and then have these operation carpets phase one complete. Right, let's go down to the ground floor and help Rich with the skirting. Right then, let's try and decipher this. This is a good idea. Last week we did this, and let's just transfer it into the real world and see if it works. Um, if you watched last episode, you know that I made a plan uh, of all the skirtings and the cuts. So we're going to do, go around the room now and do all these cuts. They're oversized, each one, because uh, this is the most efficient way I can think of of making sure that I don't have too much wastage of the skirting boards. Uh, and thus having to spend more money on more skating boards, keep everything to a minimum. So here we go then, um, I'm going to take this over to Rich who's got himself set up. Um, if you're going to put skirting on the floor, make sure you're in the floor eating zone. Look, look what happened to mine, look, it's gone frozen, unbelievable. Um, got it all set up now on a very handy fire door that we just had lying around. we we'll check this beast out that we've been sent from Karcher. This is the, what is it, Rich, the part, not part M, that's the difference, class M. It, it's a class M, which means it's, it's um, a higher level of, um, what's the word? It's a higher level of protection when you're using certain materials, plasterboards, MDFs, whereas L class is lower for just like softwoods really, so it's a higher protection, the filters are better, that kind of thing. Beautiful. And it's got all proper actual, um, Hoover attachment and anything with it, so we're not going to review it now because we've just got it out of the box. Um, you can do wet stuff as well. Oh, can we? Oh, oh, with this? Oh, right, okay. Oh, that's ball sport. Um, but, so we're going to use this for a few jobs now, uh, as in over the coming weeks, whatever. But we're going to use it for everything, every possible thing for dust extraction and hoovering up the lot. And we're going to give it a proper comprehensive review. Which might not be to the new year because we're going to get some, you know, some proper work out of it and see what it's like. But uh, I think the only thing it can't do is jet wash your drive. But it better clean up after it, wouldn't it? I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right then, so we'll get this plan over here. We'll twist our melons. Thank you to Alicia for organising it. We've been oh, in exactly. contact uh, back and forth. Uh, we had a bit of an issue with delivery as well. It was delivered somewhere we didn't think it was, so we've sorted. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you. No, okay, nice one. There you go, then. Right, shame to get dirty, but here we go. But well, there's no point just sitting there gathering dust, is there? Oh, <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, right, skirtings. One ground floor. Skirted. Very, very happy. Just going to go round now with the caulking after I've cleaned up and get it ready for painting tomorrow. And hopefully, it should just be the one coat, because as I say in the previous episode, it's had its undercoat, it's pre-primed anyway, had its undercoat, had its coat of gloss. So, one more all the way over, and that should be us done. And I'm going to use, even though I've done the entire house and some difference, I'm going to use this stuff, ever build, cork once, no slump, easy smooth, apply once. Paint in an hour. Not that that really matters because I'll be doing it tonight and then painting tomorrow. But I thought I'd give it a go because the fella uh, Brad who fitted the worktops, he used um, caulk from the same brand. I couldn't find the exact same stuff that he used, but it's the same ingredients wise acrylic and paint in an hour, all that sort of stuff. 
and it was very very good I was impressed with it so I thought I'd give it a go so I'll let you know how I get on with that and uh, to clean up I will be using this absolute beast what a fantastic piece of kit that is it's like a transformer all this stuff that comes out of it manually obviously size of the hose so yeah we're going to give it to go through its paces I've just built the main hoover bit out of it and I'll just give it a quick and see there can't you it's just how clean that is can feel like a before and after like a Daz advert remember them um, for a while now I've been keeping sweeping down to a minimum because it just kicks dust up as you can imagine so I've been trying to hoover as much as I can so I'm going to hoover all this now as much as I can all the way over there's still a bit of dust lying about however good that is it's only ever as good as the tool it's plugged into i.e when the actual blade hits the material the dust that kicks out and uh, Rich says that the Milwaukee chop saw that you saw earlier it's not great for that there's better models out there in terms of that part of the dust extraction so it's not a slice on that um, at all but and as I say there's been a lot of hand cutting going on describing so I'm going to tidy all up uh, and do some corky and then I think I'll call it a day yeah and somewhere I'll get the brush out oh hold on one more thing on this check this out when I turn it off yeah that <laughs> like a big bass drum going off apparently I don't know, I'll read into it a bit better but by all accounts it gives the filter a thud when it turns off uh, to shake it, shake the debris off it loose and keeps it all in check. It's ace, isn't it? So have another girl listen to this. <laughs> anyway, little things, I suppose. It's the following morning, and these look finished, don't they? Me and the wife corked it last night. Not a euphemism. And I'm so glad that I undercoated it and glossed it before I fitted them because. It looks done, doesn't it? It only needs that one coat. If I got to this stage and I was still, I still had to undercoat it and do it under the entire process, I think it'd be a bit of, a bit disheartening, I think. Things that wear up with the job. That look fantastic. Right then, moving on from that. Next time you see that, that'll be finished. Let me talk to you very quickly about this stuff. Now I know what you're thinking, and don't worry, I'm a big boy, I can take it. But what you're probably also thinking is that I'm a long way from needing anything that cleans a patio. Well, you're right about that. But I am getting a bit of green on my render, on the corners of my render. I'll go outside in a second, I'll film it and uh, give you a better picture of it. And now there's a few reasons for that. A lot of time it's because uh, Shelter hasn't been provided within the building of the house, soffits, all that sort of stuff. The overhang at the top, but the overhang around here isn't too bad. What I've built, but I was never going to go down the old 200 mil soffits and fascia roofs, it was always going to be trying being keeping with um, the original house, which uh, which I've done. So I, I might have fell foul to a bit of you know, a bit of a susceptibility is that the word for it for that? Um, but also, geographically, we're very high up here. We're at the top of a hill. Uh, there's no protection around. Um, and we are higher than, like most other teams in the country, um, the Albion. The baggage ground is in that direction. I'll show you from the loft in a second. And we're above that. And the reason why that's significant is, you may or may not know, that the baggage ground is the highest one in the country. Again, geographically, not so... <laughs> Nothing to do with football skill. So, we're high, basically, and we get battered by the weather when it comes in, you know. We get it in the corners, take it, and they get wet, and the nature of the render, it holds maybe a little bit, and it uh, gets a bit green. So this patio magic, I have been put onto it by none other than Neil, my electrician. He reckons it's great stuff for this sort of thing. And well, it's built for cleaning the algae, which is what that is, off patios. So I've put a bit in a, in a bottle. I'm going to spray it on. It says four to one for normal mixes, for light mixes, nine to one. 
Um, so there's no like for drastic cases, two to one or anything, four to one is as strong as you go with it. Read the label if you're going to give it a go. It is chemicals, you know what I mean? Don't just take my word for it. Make sure you do a bit of research yourself as well. Uh, it does say keep, make sure no pets go anywhere near it for five or six hours, something like that, whatever. So just make sure you read the label. So I'm going to go outside now. I'm going to spray it on, wait a couple of days and see if it does anything. I can't jet wash this stuff, well, I'm, I'm reluctant to because this remnant is actually cork sprayed on cork if you press it it's quite spongy we're going to go into all that in a, in a separate video when the lads come back and finish the house off so because as you probably know from the front it hasn't been done yet so we're going to get that sorted uh, if the, hopefully next year so we'll go into all that then but um just so you know apparently six mil of this cork salt it's called is equivalent to 40 mils worth of insulation so who knows we're going to go through that again a bit further down the road so for now I'll put that on towards the end of the video, which will be in a couple of days' time, from my point of view. We'll, uh, we'll have a look, we'll see if it works, then we'll do the ace of it, and it'll be ace, won't it? So, we shall see, we shall see. So don't bite just yet, just wait, wait till the end of the video. Right then, what am I going to do? Uh, paint. Right then, you don't want to see that. Right, I'll uh, come back when it's finished. Right then, this is as good a place as any to uh, give it a test. Four to one, as been mentioned. Well, yeah, that's it then. Wait a couple of days and we'll see what happens. And there you can see, Sid Albion Ground, currently hosting Ipswich Town, we're one nil up, so come on you baggies. And you can also see, Quite a bit higher than that, so we do get battered by the weather here. But there we have it. Right, let's see how that one pans out. Speaking of panning, let's pan around to this. Our finished loft room. Beautiful. Couple of coats of emulsion. One coat of gloss. A bit of a freshen up. A bit of filler, as you saw earlier. Cracks are now gone. Excellent. Very, very happy with that. And our little experiments, I mean, you know, not really that much of an experiment really, it's been done for years, hasn't it? But you don't see it that often in this country, but in America, as all they do is tape and joint the plasterboard, whatever they call it, drywall over there or gyp rock or whatever. Um, you, uh, joints, joint the joints, tape them all up, go over them, this whole trade in itself, and then paint it. And it's, uh, it's obviously, obviously works on it. That looks lovely for a little kind of, you know, interim, interim measure, considering something's always going to be in front of that once it all gets furnished. So it was never worth getting that round and, well, the money of getting the plaster in and, you know, and, and, and doing it. There's no, there's no need. We just go to show you, if you're doing, as I said earlier, under the cupboard, under the stairs cupboard, I should say, and you want to touch it up a little bit, you can do that quite easily. You can do it yourself. Or maybe you've had some work done to the kitchen, it's not going to get done for Christmas, having guests around. It shows, isn't it? A couple of hours, boom. Makes it look very nice. Yes, so we're happy. All I've got to do now is get the new beast up here, vac it out, and we're done. Speaking of being done, let's hear it for the Wagner Control Pro. It's a wrap for her. She's done on this job and she hasn't skipped a beat. It's beautiful. I do recommend getting into that if you're in the game or even if you're doing your house up to this extent in every room. That is a game changer. It really, really is. And to be honest with you, it's quite fun. Right then, vac it out, get down to the living room, paint all the skirts in the same way I've done here. That means then I could clear the first floor downstairs and then back the first floor ready for carpets. Excellent. Excellent. Come on you lot. You can do it.
Right, well, a couple of days have passed, still no fireplace, which is a shame, but I'm really hoping that gets sorted soon. Leave that with me. All the skirtings are sorted. We won't mention those again, because I realise it's a bit boring. Uh, I had a bit of a disappointing end to the day, a couple of nights ago. This middle door here, if you remember, it was all warped out. Uh, the company supplied a new one, not a problem. It's been here for quite a while, to be fair. Finally got round to sorting it, uh, took it all off, got all the measurements, got a new door out, and it's only got two hinge holes drilled in it, not three. So I couldn't fit it, I haven't got the, I haven't got the gizmos for all that sort of stuff, so. Nor do I really want to pay all this money for a kitchen and then drill hinge holes myself, basically, so. Anyway, good as gold, I couldn't pick it up the following morning. Uh, oh, well, I think within an hour of them knowing it had happened, to be fair. Um, I uh, couldn't pick it up, off it went. Hopefully it's coming back today, so we shall see. But I thought, I won't end on a negative for the day. I will get the sink in place, get it all in, get all the waste in, get the tap in. If you remember, that's my old kitchen sink. Um, and did all that, got it all in, got it all sorted, turn the tap on, tap leaked. As in, it's broken, leaked. It must have took a knock somewhere. I mean, what's happened in this house? It's highly surprising. Oh, oh, that's a bit of a downer. Anyway, so I've got to go and buy a new tap, which I'll show you now. And I will have to uh, wait for this door to sort this out, so that'll be fun, all by myself. Um, yeah, and I'll also talk you through these bad boys that I've bought and why I've bought them. Alright, so I'll tell you right now, I'll show you this tap, which is a bit of a gem, it's got to be said. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and we'll see if it works. Said tap, Amazon special, 18 quid or something, 18 pounds something, delivered to your door. Perfect price for what's, what I want it for, just in, in just in there, washing just crap off crap, basically, in the utility. Comes with the tap connectors, fine. It's a little bit different from the picture or the video that was with the, uh, that was on the Amazon site. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay, I was going to show you. Um, very quickly, just how to fit it, just as a, you know, just in case you, you've got something to do in your house, you want to just quickly change a tap or something, an emergency tap. Um, but this comes with fittings that I haven't seen before, so I'm not going to, because chances are, you're not going to, your tap that you buy won't come with stuff like this. But we'll see if it works. Um, I'll get it all sorted now, and uh, yeah, and I will give you my review of it. Um, Speaking of reviews and um, word of mouth and whatnot, there was a YouTube comment on the other day uh, for us, which I found really, really useful, regarding using a roller to emulate a sprayed finish for a door, because if you remember, I, I messed these doors up, that side of this door, and then the front side, or the, the living room side of the living room door. And a fellow uh, got in touch, uh, really useful comments, thank you very much for this comment, and uh, recommended a Rotor Concave Mini Rollers. Excellent, I thought that is just the kind of information I need. Thank you very, very much, I'll buy some. Can't find them anywhere. Amazon are out, don't know when they're getting them back. Tool Station are out, don't know when they're getting them back. And nowhere else seems to do the exact ones. And if I, I don't really wanna go rogue on the same, but slightly different. So I did a bit of research myself. And these have come up, and it clearly says, at least Two Fussy Blokes is the brand. I've never heard of them personally. Five mil nap, does that mean anything to you? Um, Spray-like finish, perfect for water-based paints. Well, it's a water-based gloss, and I want a spray-like finish. So I'm gonna let you know what, they, what these are like. I think they were, oh, I don't know, just over a tenner for a pack of 10. I've also got a lot of touching up to do around the house, scuffs and whatnot on the emulsion side of things. And obviously a pack of 10, and I'm more than enough to do that with. So I will let you know again about those, but from all the Amazon um, reviews and for what it says it's supposed to do, we shall see. Sounds good, fingers crossed. Um, just looking up, I've just noticed that patio magic. I'm gonna go and check outside now and see whether that actually worked or not. Uh, right, actually, let's get it out of the way because my intrigue has taken over. Let's go and have a look. Right, well, as I walk down to where I sprayed, I'll just put on screen now 
me spraying it so you get a proper before and after so that's before and this is after and I think that's a marked improvement but maybe I wasn't very thorough with me spraying because I was doing it whilst also looking at my phone which I noticed that the other day so I found another bit that needed doing and I was a bit more definitive with it and as you can see green 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 now you tell me whether you can tell where I sprayed and where I didn't you ready here we go boom look at that clean line there look at that just sprayed just sprayed, no scrubbing, just sprayed on, same bottle, same mix, didn't do anything different. I just went from down there to up here, and that was a couple of days ago. So that is the answer, which I'm very, very happy about. So it's a maintenance issue now. Once every year or once every couple of years, get up, get a proper sprayer on the hose and, you know, want to reach you somewhere, so I'm not pumping it by hand, so to speak. And uh, yeah, excellent. Very, very happy with that. Magic patio. Excellent. Recommend it. Right then, moving on. Right then, should we do this together? The water's on, no leaks. Very, very simple. I have fit in it, to be honest. But I've got all the access in the world here, so it was never going to be difficult, really. I have ended up with ridiculously long flexes, because these were put on to the stabs out the wall there with the thought of them going straight on to the copper tails that are off the original tap but obviously that plan has now changed they've ended up with this but that's fine that'll do for now uh, I know it's on backwards by the way but I wanted the isolation a bit more accessible than over there because god knows what's going to be shoved in front of this and my dad came up with a good idea the other day of putting a compression uh, fitting there that we had in the um, in my box that's behind me as well as obviously where it makes the sink there that way just unscrew that unscrew that that can then be removed to make all this maintenance with underfloor heating a lot easier but saying that i think it's you're not going to get much better than that really if anyone needs to get to it but it can all be moved very very easily right then anyway let's do it i now pronounce this utility sink open Yeah, there we go. So it's got a bit of a, an adjustable thing to it, washing stuff off. And then I think if I press this, a bit more of a jet. Beautiful, perfect. For a utility that's going to be used utility sink I should say, it's going to be used for washing crap off crap as I said earlier, I think that'll do for now innit, eh? 19 quid, get it all up and running, done right then, uh, what's next? what a beautiful evening look at that, it's been a cold one today oh hello Looks like Santa's been out checking up on me. Seems to have been a good boy this year. Cheeky sad. He should know I have. Uh, I'm not taking that as good news. It is now about four o'clock in the afternoon and that has been frozen all day, which means the heat isn't coming up and melting it so that insulation is working. Beautiful. Right, well, I've been round and I've done all my touching up, so to speak, with the two fussy blokes roller. And I've got to tell you, I've got to give them a glowing endorsement. Is that the word? Anyway, you know what I mean. I'm happy with it. You can't see from there, but trust me, that is very, very nice. That's sprayed. Oh, I know you can't see it. I might, as well, I might as well shut up, but that sprayed. This was sprayed as well, but I put it flat on the floor on a couple of little runners just to keep it off the floor. Um, and they stuck to it um, and they took a bit of paint off. There, there, not the four corners. So I gave it a bit of a rub down and rubbed, and uh, sorry, rolled it all over with that. And that is as good as what it was when it was sprayed. And I'll take you downstairs now. 
and I'll show you the emulsion side of things because I've done the walls as well. Two top tips for you. If you sprayed a room and you've had some scuff marks and you want to blend them in, use one of them two Fussy Blokes rollers, the smooth ones, because they work, they're beautiful. You're thinking what you're showing me there, right? Because I can't see anything. Well, that's the point. Second top tip, if you doubly want to make sure that you can't see anything, get a light like that that gives off all these shadows and then you'll never see another scuff mark again. You've just got to keep it on all the time. Right then, we've had a delivery, right? Well, I have. This thing, I had my address, even though a lot of you find out where I live anyway. Uh, still no biscuits people, still no biscuits. That is a thermal imaging camera and I'll go into why I've said yes as to reviewing it one. It's not going to be in this video, don't worry. Uh, I'll go into why I've said yes to reviewing it now. Again, you can't see it, but that's another door that I've rolled on. Beautiful, very, very happy. It's got me out of the poo poo, that that's excellent. Right then, a couple of videos ago, you may or may not be aware, but I reviewed a tablet. I was given it for free as long as I did a video on it. And I did, and I kept it, and I, I was given the opportunity to say what I wanted to say about it, honestly, and uh, I, I loved it. I think it's great, I haven't seen it for a while, actually. Um, let's dig it out in a mess around here, but uh, I'll find it somewhere. It's probably still going strong. Um, but a few of you were appalled by it. You've, uh, maybe not you, because I think they've unsub unsubscribed, so they're not watching anyway. So let's talk about them, shall we? Um, you're a sellout. One of them said, um, be careful now you're in bed with the Chinese tech firms. You know, calm down. All right, let's all keep it in perspective. Uh, but we get asked, uh, luckily, I think, I think we're in a, you know, we're in a fortunate position, that we get asked by uh, companies, do you, want to, do you want this, do you want to review that, uh, you get to keep it, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of it we turned down. We turned down infrared panels this week. Don't care too much about that. Um, endless laser uh, measurement things, you know, no thank you. But something that has... Um, interested me from day one since starting this project is has the insulation that I've put into this place worked? Will it work? Will this house be as firmly efficient as it possibly could be within the budget and the fact that it's a terraced house and uh, i.e. we've got a big leaky wall behind us? Um, do the vapour barriers work? Oh, cause I obviously know where they are, I know where they aren't. Is there any way that I can measure that well with a with a um, thermal imaging camera? I can, and then lo and behold, a company gets in touch. Do you want a thermal imaging camera? You can keep it, just you know, include it in one of your videos and, and talk about its functions. Well, I'm going to do that. Not now. It'll be once we've moved in, so hopefully over Christmas, so it might be ready for the new year, maybe even over Christmas, who knows? Uh, I'm gonna when we're moved in and the furniture's in and the family's in and the heating's on and everyone's warm enough and it's cold outside, like it's going to be, I can go around with this thing and I can evaluate whether it works. How leaky are the windows? I'm not triple glazed or anything. Uh, how leaky is this, the party wall? Of uh, How good are the um, vapour barriers that I've put in? Are they working in comparison to walls that haven't got vapour barriers? We can go through all that. And I think, well, I personally, I'm going to find that very interesting. And is there anything I can do, if there is a big leak somewhere, is there anything I can do to stop it and make this house as firmly efficient as possible? Because these bills are only going to go up, let's face facts. So we've got to keep on top of it and we've got to do what we can. And we're going to use that in order to do this. Right then, we are coming to the end of December 1st, pinch of the punch and all that. Tomorrow's the deadline. Tomorrow is December 2nd, obviously, you may have already worked that out. We've got carpets coming, I believe. They haven't cancelled yet. And as I say, it's just after four o'clock. So tomorrow morning, hopefully, there'll be a knock on the door, a few rolls of carpets, and a few fellas to fit them. Let's do it. I was going to fit the grippers, or even when I picked them up. Fit 
fit, uh, I was going to fit the grippers myself up the stairs because Rich put the fear of God into me, saying that um, they'll, they're nailed in, they'll nail them up the stairs and they'll smash the stairs. And uh, you'll have creepy stairs, even though they're brand new, as you may or may not know. So I was going to fit them myself, I was going to glue them all on. However, a bit of research into it, there's a little bit of a science behind it in terms of you've got to leave the one and a half times the thickness or double the thickness of the carpet from the edges uh, they've got to be in the right place and I just thought you know what I'm going to get involved it's better there's nothing worse than you know somebody trying to help you I've done this for you and it's been wrong you've got to redo there well there is something worse than that getting cut square with a, 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 a full one straight in between them that's worse however I thought let's leave it to them but I'll warn them while we're here, don't smash the crap out of it. Let's just, you know, let's just tap them in nicely and not ruin the stairs. So they're going to be doing that tomorrow. Um, let's see, I will be, hopefully, this time tomorrow, in a less echoey house and a bit of a cosy one. We shall see. It's D Day, Carpet Day, December 2nd, C Day, I suppose. Better than a B day. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just past nine o'clock and no sign of any fitters yet. I haven't got a phone number for them, it's all done through the shop. But it's still early, it's a Saturday for all I know. This morning might be a few hours job, so it's a late morning, early afternoon finish. Don't know, I'm not going to pressure him. Just nervous, man, because on the flip side of that, I also know that people who work. Yeah, I'll do it on Saturday. I'll squeeze it in, I'll do it on a Saturday. They might get a little bit carried away the night before. That's not a judgment on anybody. That's just something I have done myself. So, we shall see. I'll obviously keep you updated. Hopefully, a big van will turn up in a minute and some blokes to fit some carpet. And all this would have been worth it and it all would have gone to plan. Fingers crossed. It's no good, I had to make a phone call. There's no way I could carry on with my nose pressed up against the glass like a dog that wants to go out for a walk. Um, they're going to be here within the hour, apparently. Um, phoned them up, uh, what house number are you? Told them. Uh, what we do here exactly? Oh, come on. Oh, doesn't fill me with confidence. This is going to be fitted right if you don't know what you're actually coming to. Anyway, I'm sure this will be a case of when it's all done, it's done beautifully and it's fine. And what the hell was you worried about? But it's just the building game, it's as difficult as the people in it. It really is. Communication is key. Tell them what time you're going to be there and have that little bit of professionalism that you know what you're going to. When the customer, you've already had the money for it. Not the labour, to be fair, but they've had the however much foot it was for the carpet. So, anyway. I'm sure it'll be a case of it'll be all right once it's done. I'm going to do some constructive set of mind of things. Sort this little lot up behind me. I'm just going to explain what's going on with this wall here, why it isn't uh, complete and why it looks the way it does. And uh, fingers crossed, they'll turn up. The beautiful sound of a house getting smashed to bits. Beautiful. They're here, as you can probably hear. And they're putting all the grippers down, gets nailed down, so it's a bit noisy. But it's the sound of progress. Here we go, beautiful. I can relax now. I can relax. They're here, they're going to do the job, and it's going to be done today. Beautiful. The only reason why I'm so head up about it, there's deliveries on the back of this starting from Monday, today, Saturday, from Monday, stuff starts getting delivered and it needs to be delivered and then straight upstairs to where it's going to live, not stored down here. That would be a nightmare. Anyway, we're done. In terms of the stairs, they use a stair gun for them. They don't use the hammers. Anyway, to smash the crap out of them. Beautiful. Right then, let's leave them to it. And at the end of the day, we'll see, hopefully, some finished rooms. Well, to state the bleeding obvious, stuff has got to go somewhere. I cut up the timbers, what I had left from the build, the existing house, that's gonna be in the log burner, and it'll fuel us 
I don't know, what do you reckon? Till about dinner time on the first day. I had no other use for it, so um, just chopped it up. That's gonna go in a log store, which is going to get built here. I had a bit of a brainwave, and I have a floor to ceiling log store there. So a wall's gonna be built either off this way, off this wall here, and then it's gonna be there, or off that wall, in which case it's gonna be accessible there. All plastered in, so it looks like you know a proper wall, and then little um, little slats. Let's, let's say it's built uh, built out here, and there'll be little shelves in there. I don't know. Would you reckon three or four maybe? Um, just slats ones with the cedar that we've got, and it'll all be stacked up. So it'll look like it's all stacked up together, all on top of one another. But actually, on shelves that way. Then the bottom stuff can get used. Else, it's just going to get you know down to there, top back up, and then back down to there. Is there any logs that I do, I do get that are a bit damp or whatnot, they can go in there at the bottom one maybe, and then they can season, whatever the phrase is. They can dry out basically. And then use the ones at the top. Anyway, that is a different episode, but one that will be coming out, or at least a job will be completed before Christmas. So what's happening here? Didn't get it plastered, simply because we have got wall-to-wall -wall cupboards going here. I say cupboards, the shelves go in that side. In fact, if I stand here, and I'll put the artist's impression up now. Da -da! And that's exactly what it's gonna look like. <laughs> Open shelves on the left, and then there are three units in the middle. The one on the right will just be a wardrobe, basically, with a rail. That's for coats and stuff. Obviously, uh, boots at the bottom. Uh, the one on the left will be a carbon copy. I say carbon copy. It'll be handed differently because it'll be opening that way. But it will be shelves at the bottom. Sorry, shelves at the top. Drawers at the bottom. And that is for absolute shite. The stuff that you just accumulate and you need to put somewhere, it's all gonna go in there, even though it's in your, in your other room. And then this is how you tidy it up. Boom, gone. And that's what's that for. And then the one in the middle, the cupboard in the middle, is gonna be a little bit of a surprise. And we'll come to that as and when we do it. So that's what that's for. So I'm gonna have it tidy up now. Some of this can go in the skip, and that's obviously for the carpet. Well, that's gotta go in the skip. Uh, as soon as the carpet's laid, that can go upstairs. The other can go back upstairs. Blah de blah de blah. Right. Let's do some of this. Oh, check this out. Woo. There's another lay down. Woo. There's carpet actually in the house. Woo. There's a cutting station outside. It's happening. The plan is working. Not only that, I'm getting confirmation emails of all the deliveries. After this, they're all coming in. The plan is working. That green light to get in for Christmas is fully on and our foot is on the floor. But there's one thing we're gonna need and it's one thing I've only given a little bit of consideration about. I'm gonna leave the lads to it. I'm gonna nip out and I'm gonna put that right. <whistles> testing, testing, one, two, one, two. Do I sound less echoey? Is your audio better? But I've got a couple of complaints about that because in big echoey room, does it sound better? Should do. Because we got carpet, yay! That door had to come off. But there we go. I'm sure you've seen carpet before, but not in this house you haven't. The carpet that we ripped up to do this job, you may remember, had no underlay on it, under it even. It was about five mil thick and stapled down, and this is the nicest stuff I've ever had in the house. Beautiful. So all that hard work over the past week or so, it's all paid off. It all went to the plan. Meticulous planning, hard work. It's all paid off, hasn't it? No. No, it hasn't. Not quite. Because they messed up the measurements and hall stairs and landing and none of it can be done 
for at least a week. <laughs> ah well. I had a laugh doing it. <laughs> There's worse things going on in the world, isn't there? Of course there is. The rooms are done, all the bedrooms are done, so all the furniture can be delivered and go into the rooms, straight through the front door, straight up the stairs, in the room, done. Well, I say done. It's like IKEA, it's all going to be built. But you know what I mean. So it's not going to hold us up too much in that respect, or at all in that respect. I don't want to move back in here unfinished to the extent where the all stairs and landing isn't done. So it's going to hold us back then. Potentially, I'll know more at the end of Monday. Today, Saturday, as I say, the 2nd of, the 2nd of December. So, here's my lad's room. All same carpet throughout. It's just that the all stairs and landing one is different and by all accounts it started off as a mismeasurement by the measurer and then he phoned back he went no no it's it's been ordered wrong it, it's come wrong it was ordered correctly but it's it's come short so to speak of course it has yeah the frustrating thing is it's the second of only two things i haven't measured in this entire project. I didn't measure the worktops. I left that to the company and they were wrong. And I didn't measure the carpets. I left it to the company and it's wrong. Whether it's their fault, supplier's fault, as they say, I don't know. I don't know. I might be doing a, a, a misservice there. Either way, you deal with these companies. They're the face of it, aren't they? Fitters, again, as with the worktops, fitters, beautiful, great people, excellent, done a great job, nice, what, you know, what more could I possibly ask for? Um, but all they do, the fitters, is get given, quite literally, what they're supposed to do in the morning. There you go, take this to that address. They have, they have no input into the workings out and all that sort of stuff. So, to be fair to him, he's the one who knew it was going to be short. He looked at what was there, measured it himself, and went, "This is going to be, this is going to be tight." And uh, turns out it was uh, a bit too tight. So, yeah. As I say, worst things happen at sea, and it looks a lot neater than what it did this morning. But what did I say earlier? What did I say? The building game. It's only as difficult as the people in it. <sighs> it's just a bit disheartening. You know what I mean? You work so hard for that day, that yes. And you get... Anyway, as I say, worst things happen. It's going to get sorted. Uh, we play forward. We play forward. Right then. Now what? I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll end it there. After I've gone over a couple of things, I've already found that ah, it's happened for this reason. Reason. This is arch right here. It's like a little bit of filler around there. I completely forgot to shape all that in, i.e. restoring this archway. Had the carpets been fitted, I'll be doing it over new carpets. As it is, I can just do it and cause a bit of a mess. There you go. It's happened for a reason. It's a shame. It's only a bit of carpet though, isn't it? As I said before, we will plough forward. It will get resolved, I'm sure. But it just goes to show, doesn't it? That if this is for a customer, and I was foreseeing, overseeing everything, I should say, trying to foresee everything, I'm the, I'm the fall guy, aren't I? I'm the one they're going to come to. Why'd you go with them? Why'd you do this? You know, it happens. And it's like, something to do with me. <laughs> So if that's happening to you, if you are a customer and the builders, you know, it's Christmas and that, that time is, that clock is ticking, that countdown is well and truly running out, it might not be their fault, it might not be their fault, they might be trying really hard for you, all right, but there we go. Now, what I did in the last episode was 
create more questions than actually answered. A few times I said, well, I'll come back to that. And I never did. Well, I'm going to try my best to do it now. A couple of, of you have asked in the comments about what oil I used on the doors. And I did say in the video that I'd say, but I never did. This is Osmo door oil. I'll show you downstairs in a second. And the reason why I've used that is quite precise because these are the instructions, if you will, that come with the Howdens, that's where it's from, these doors, Howdens fire doors, and they are just in the corner like that, cellophane around them, and there we have it. And on here, there's a couple of do's and don'ts, and to quote, it says, our doors are not suitable for waxes, polishes, dyes, or oils, e.g. Danish oil, as they do not properly seal the door and can lead to deep lamination of veneer. However, Osmo door oil, is suitable. Make of that what you will. Have Howden's just got, are they in cahoots with Osmo door oil? Or are there loads of Howden's doors up and down the country that have been doused in Danish oil and are now dissolving like sugar in the rain or you know spontaneously combusting? I don't know. I don't know but that's what it says on there and I have not got the balls to go against it so I bought some of that stuff and I used it and to be fair we've used Osmo oil before on cedar cladding and things on the garden room it is good stuff there's no denying it is very very good stuff that's two coats so whether or not you can actually use this stuff that's up to you to decide but I'm not going against it right I'll take it downstairs and I will show you the underfloor heating controls I said I'd go through it, I didn't, but here we go. I've had a fella come round, thermosat's now on the wall. That's that, uh, that controls zone two, which is everything from that wall there, all the way around to the toilet, around there. And this one around here, controls zone one. And they're all wired Back to the boiler, and here. Now I want to say a big thank you to the people in the comments and the emails that I had. I asked a couple of episodes ago, I asked for help with this, and you responded very, very kindly, and I do appreciate it. Uh, I may not have got back to all the emails if I haven't. Uh, I, I sincerely apologise and I do appreciate your time it took, the time you took out your life to get in touch with me. Um, where I finally found somebody, there's the zone for it, that's when I had um, left over actually from a job, which is why it's 10 zones this thing's got, and I've only got two. But it's a smaller unit than the other one I've got and it just fitted there. So there we go. So it all goes into that and then into that and then that goes into something up there and it's all it's all working independently now off those firm stats and it's all beautiful he's balanced all those out for me uh, three liters a minute apparently it needs to go around yeah right in fine uh, he also suggested i got one of these and i did and he fit it for me there and then uh which is the honeywell home something what that does that links to the wireless thermostat, which is just there, it shouldn't be, it should be upstairs, but it's just there, and that controls the radiators upstairs, so it's all controllable now from thermostats, and once the Wi-Fi is up and running and whatnot, there'll be a hub for that, uh, sorry, for this, so I can do it off my phone, can't do it off my phone for that, but I don't want to work radiators off my phone, I'm not bothered, to be honest with you, but anyway, he come round, he quoted, he did the job for £120. He was here about three hours, I think, three and a half hours, all sorted. Uh, I supplied everything that is labour only. And the reason why I say that is, I had another quote of somebody else who wanted to do it, labour only, for £500. Now far be it from me to dictate what somebody should be earning. If they're getting that money off customers, then fair play, you go ahead mate, you, you carry on. But I know when I'm having my pants pulled down, and that is not a 500 pound job. 495, to be fair. Not quite 500. 495 quid, labor only. No, absolutely not. 
my personal opinion, and I'm sure there's electricians out there that might, or plumbers out there that might disagree, but my personal opinion, if you're quoted that, to do this job on this sort of scale, when you're supplying everything, you the customer, supplying everything, it's just their know-how, which comes at a price, I get it, 500 quid, 495 quid, no, absolutely not. So we got kicked into church. In fact, I've never turned down a quote so quick in my entire life. I was, uh, I was shocked, visibly shocked. Osmo door oil, there it is. This is a one litre tub that has done four doors. That's eight sides twice. And that is about two thirds gone. So there's enough there for maintenance, I reckon, for the next few years. So there we go. Uh, right then, I believe that is it. Thank you for watching. Boy, we will get there in the end, but don't worry. Don't worry. It's not been that bad a day. It's been all right. There's always ups to these downs, isn't there? But spare a thought for my wife. Because you know what I said earlier? That I've, I've missed, I haven't thought about it as much. I need to go out and do it. Well, I did it. So my wife today thought she was getting carpets throughout. She hasn't. And also, to top it all off, her husband's gone out and bought an absolutely massive TV. <laughs> Hashtag pray for Mrs. Mr. A. Eh? But there we have it. And uh, what due diligence did I do to, uh, to arise at this particular product? It's the biggest one I could get that fits on that wall. That's it. That'll do me. Right then, next time we will have carpets. There's a video coming soon with a update on the big job. Mm, yeah, uh, that's gonna be an interesting one. And until then, thank you for watching and take care.